All right, testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three. The wane in Spain falls mainly on the plains. The ants in France stay mainly in your pants. Good morning, everybody. Are you here? Comme vous Let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. So please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. Hello, my name is Wayne McDonald. I'm the Chief FX Market Strategist for TradersWay.com. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Thank you for coming here again today. Thank you for the loyalty and respect that you show me. I do appreciate it. Uh, could you please subscribe? Would you please like? And would you please visit tradersway.com and open an account today? All right, this has to be a quickie. I got a, a, a lot of unusual things going on, a.k.a. I got to jump on an airplane and um, get out of here. Part of my supermodel life. It just uh, It's just a normal thing when you're a supermodel. So let us be going now. So what I suggested, we just go through the, uh, the basics, uh, gold, oil, dollar, yen, and uh, call it a day. Yeah, it's filling in. It's filling in. November's only half over, though. Um, and then, hey, if you're in my swing trading group, we need to meet like right after this and bang out a swing trading thing. And then I got to go and then I can jump on a plane and I got to head up to uh, Cambridge. So uh, one of those crazy mornings. So without further ado, let's go. This chat's not quite sitting quite properly, and this view is not quite what I want to see. I wonder if there's a different way I can go. Okay. This is better for me. Can you can you guys still is it still broadcasting? That stinks so. Cool. All right, so let's go 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 go. So once again, please uh, subscribe, please like, and by the way, if you like my chart templates. Uh, the download link is in the description below. So let's just zip over. Let's get out of these Swissies. Let's do, uh, let's start with oil because I've been waiting for oil. Been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for oil and waiting. So here we have the yet, a, yet another level of support. Down in here, where if we were going to be bullish, we we're hoping for some sort of double bottom, higher high. I don't know if you want to call that the double bottom and a higher high. It's your call. Uh, the next, the next level of challenge for resistance is up here. That's why I have this marked here, based off of what was going on there. Um, so we still really need a down and an up, in my humble opinion. Uh, I'm not aggressive in a downward move. If I'm a bull, I'm conservative. Okay. Now bears. If you uh, want to sell again, yeah, you're kind of getting in that zone. It's a little bit early, but maybe off the four hour 21, as you can see in here. Yeah, that's a maybe, right? That's maybe. Look, look down, 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 up, up, sell, 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 down, down, right? All of this. So this is just another down, 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 up, up, sell, perhaps. So you got the 21 and then you got the next level. If you're a bear, you just need to choose. Okay. Bulls, you kind of wait for, need to wait for something better because a bear probably would sell in here, probably come down and develop your double bottom. So maybe you're buying actually tomorrow and not today. Could be a rabbit. Could be. Okay. Take a look at gold. Ah, gold is finally moving. Very interesting, huh? I think it's very interesting. We finally got this kind of move and back up into here. And then we did get the drop. And then we have plan A off this zone, plan B off the other zone. Plan A has worked, making a higher high. 
it's kind of interesting. I wouldn't get overly excited, but it did what it was supposed to do. And if you were to get overly excited, uh, you want to do it because of this, because that predicts a high of 12.56, maybe 12.70, 12.60 to 12.70. Hey, man, that ain't bad. Don't cry over $45, right? So that's very interesting. So now in the small time frames, you have to decide if you're still buying these dips and stuff. And on the small time frames, I look at this and think, all right, it's slowly trending. It's slowly climbing up to 21. But man, there's got to be something better to trade than that, right? On the short-term basis. Volatility is still quite low. All right, so if USD, if oil is going to go up, USD CAD wants to come down, right? Well, maybe it's still in the upward channel. So we have this upward channel to uh, identify the change in direction. So the change of direction is going to occur, as I, I've drawn here. You, you don't get excited about any sort of move until you get below that, right? You got to get below the channel. And we didn't get below the channel the last time I discussed this, and therefore it didn't fall, it wasn't interested in falling. Okay. Okay. So I'm not saying it will, I'm saying if it does, then that's important to bears. Now, bulls should be buying on this roll reversal that I've already identified uh, twice, it looks like, for you. Okay. And that's buying a dip at the roll reversal. Target is obviously going to be next week's uh, pivot profit zone. Okay, so that potentially is a front run trade. Whoop. Oh, uh, thank, good morning. Thanks for uh, replying to my question about long and short bias. Yeah, so uh, I try to read all the comments that you post on YouTube, and uh, when necessary, I do respond. So I do, I appreciate you. Yeah, give it a like. By the way, if you guys are new here, uh, please subscribe. And in fact, I would like someone to subscribe because uh, I made some changes to the stream and something should pop up if, if we get a new subscriber. It should alert in the video. So if you haven't subscribed, just do that and it gives a shout out type thing. It'd be really cool to see that work. All right. So anyway, so yeah, bulls are buying now. And in fact, you'd be in this small time frame and uh, you're loving it, man. You're loving it. Triple bottom, higher high, long and gone, buying the new dips, heading up long and strong. Tokyo, huh? Yeah, you know what? It's been a while since I've been to Japan. I really would really overdue. So you can maybe like Osaka in the spring. But, 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 but most of next year is already booked, so I don't really have time for personal enjoyment. So here we are in pound. Ba, 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 ba. Just amazing, right? And so what was the net result from yesterday's uh, volatility? Did anything radically change? Not quite yet, huh? So ultimately what happened, we had this as a sell again zone. We had this as buy it back zone. And guess what? Sellers won. It seems pretty straightforward and likely, huh? Yeah, well, that's why I would go. I was thinking more like May, but I guess it is April. But, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm getting one of my degrees in May at, in Harvard, so 
I don't see. I don't, I just don't see me like zipping off to Japan right before finals, right before graduation. So I'd love to someday. All right, so let's go over to Yen Yen's. And we're just sort of stuck. So zoom zoom back in. Let's do an hourly analysis on this. Okay. We had this fall. Remember how we used the fib and said, look, this fib would be a buy zone. And just to recall, remember I drew the gray lines and the Fibonacci before this fully fell. We were still up here. So I said if it was going to fall, it would fall down where? Well, maybe this pivot point, maybe the 3A2, maybe this weekly instead of the monthly. I don't know. But if you are a bull and we just made a higher high because this high is higher than the high to the left, then you would expect a higher low. So where would the higher low be? Well, maybe here, maybe here, maybe here. So I drew all that. Based on that, you would have a trade plan to buy somewhere in here. Oh, and then it would go higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, work its way back up and probably get challenged up near the top. Oh, so it came down, hit this, made a higher high, came down, made a higher low. We're, we're heading up. Now, the thing is, this is a legitimate challenge. Oops, I didn't want to do that. This is a legitimate challenge here of not making a higher high. So this is disconcerting. And you can see it didn't retrace it, it you know, it reversed. And in this case, it, you're not, you shouldn't be having 100% retracements, right? So this was great. It did exactly what we wanted to do, except it hasn't followed through yet. And that's risk. That's just risk. It, it's slowing down. We're losing the bullishness we had. And you need to recognize that, a.k.a. Uh, stop buying, a.k.a. move your stop closer, so on and so forth. Morning, Adam. How's the weather in Dubai? And that's that, right? And then bears, of course, bears are waking up and they're like, hey, maybe I should sell this. Uh, yeah, that's definitely plausible as well. Okay. And your argument now would be, well, we hit the target early in the month. I'm looking for a counter trend trade. So it made a drop and then it made a lower high. And I rolled it over on the one hour chart. Right. Top, 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 lower, low, lower, high. So bears are probably going to, dang it. Bears are probably going to try this kind of stuff now. Okay. Nice temps. Sweet. I'm overdue. I haven't been to Dubai in like a year, man. It's crazy. Kiwi, been a great performer lately. The only thing is, you know, like I said, over a week ago, we hit our target for the entire month of November. You should take the rest of the month off. And uh, it's still it's still climbing, but you notice that we've done a lot less money-wise, like in a week. Look, in a week, we're still the same price. So do you buy this dip? Yeah, you could. And some people might call it a moo trade. And if you know what a moo trade is, you'd call it a moo trade. But I say, well, moo trades are at the end of the day, not at the end of the month. So not quite. Um, but if you want to keep buying it because it's gosh darn bullish, that's up to you. That's your prerogative. That's your alpha. By all means, technically, you can. Just realize you're outside the normal market. And it's sort of like you're out in the woods and your compass breaks. Doesn't mean you have to stop walking. Okay. So maybe you play the weeklies here. And the bottom here is a central. So you're thinking weekly R2, which I've already marked for you. So this is your, you see this? So monthly R3, I guess. No, uh, yeah, monthly R3, I guess, is up here. So if you're going to keep buying, the, if you're buying this dip, that's your target, bro. Okay. And it sold at 77.50. So you sold. I guess I know what you're doing here. 
Um, why are you still in it, though? I guess you're up in here, huh? Yeah, I don't like that trade. I don't know why you sold that. Sorry. Uh, I don't have a lot of time to be nicer, I guess. I'm sorry. You sold it way too high outside the market. Um, okay, here we are. If you're a bear, your first shot here is off the uh, four hour 21. Oh, that's a one hour 21. You know what? It still works. It still works for me. Uh, if you're a bear, that, that's definitely a sell. I mean, that's straight out of the book, right? And the next sell, if you're a bear, would be up in here. Okay. So this is plan A. And this is plan B. Does that make sense? All right. Yeah, yeah, it's still, it, it doesn't matter how much money you made. It's still, you're outside the monthly. So you're selling, you're selling something that's unusually bullish. And that just, it, it, it just makes less sense to me. That's all. Metaphysically or something. Would somebody new please subscribe? I'd like to see that new thing work. It's going to send out a little shout out. And I'd like somebody to test it. So would you please subscribe? I'm sure not everybody in the room is subscribed. Add it on to CAD yet. All right, we can take a look at that. Oh, I see. Ba off the bounce, one, two, three. Create a floor off of that. Sort of like, uh, well, no, you're up, you're up high. Uh, you're up here, huh? Cool. Thank you, Dihad. Nice. That was cool. Big, big, oink, oink, sub. Yeah, it, and then it popped up here. The, the message was up here that someone had to subscribe. Yeah, sneak. So, all right, so buying a dip. I'm struggling to see the entry, I guess, here, but I don't even see a 5A cross on, well, I guess it's a, what did you hear? Uh, once again, I didn't see a 5A cross or a higher high. Maybe you're on a five minute. Huh. Not sure what your trigger was. Yeah, Bucky, I know. So, yeah, so that's a little dangerous buying it blindly, but I, I know what you're doing, and you know. You're awfully aggressive in a non-trendy market, though. I'd cautious. I would caution you. I, I need to caution you. You're very, very aggressive. But I, I see what you're doing. Like, that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, you're playing it this way. Now I got to adjust from the top uh, like that. And then I got to move this down. Okay. You're doing that. Uh, it's still really aggressive uh, and you never got a trigger, but I know what you're doing. It makes sense to me. It's a little, it's a little rough, I think, but you got it. You got it. A bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit aggressive, especially with CAD being weak and oil not going anywhere yet. You'll get paid if, if those things click, and they probably will click. It's just they haven't clicked, so it's a little bit of a gamble. You know what I mean? Just a little bit of a gamble. Take a look here. Okay. 
this goes back to Monday's trade plan. And uh, while it did go up, we missed the, the weekly central by a couple of pips, but I think we can count that as retracing back to the weekly central, right? Now it's done something else. It's setting up as a bottom. So bulls now know buy zones. Bulls now have permission to rebuy low. And then the break is here. So plan B would be okay, something like that. Um, yeah, a lot of waiting. This isn't quite right. If it turned, you could take it and argue it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the breakout pullback is the safest, of course. Okay. Yeah, well, the problem with USD Yen is we're in a risk off, risk off, risk on, risk off mode. So it'd make no sense to be trading these at the same time. Uh, fundamentally, that is. Um, but I guess you could. I mean, okay, that's a buy zone. Do you understand, like yesterday, we had this whole Brexit thing, right? Theresa May, blah, 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 blah. Remember all of that? And we talked about yesterday just being simply a risk-off mood. And what did I say? All the dollar pairs, like the dollar would get strong, the yen would get strong, and the Swissy would get strong. So in that scenario, I wouldn't trade USD Swissy, and I wouldn't trade USD yet. And I wouldn't trade Swissy yet. Because they're, they're all different variances of neutral. Okay, does that make sense? So that's not to say that we're risk on and risk off mood is still the predominant theme in the market. But it totally could be. And so therefore you really got to analyze first. And I haven't seen any breakouts on non-neutral pairs. So there's very little to say that this would be neutral. But I can tell you that there is a bit of dollar weakness. And uh, that's, that's a good sign. We have had good economic data recently. And that's what we do want to see. Or, or by you, I mean, or what by we, I mean me. Um, so that's all right. But you can see we're still technically in a sell zone even though this has gone up and up and up and we predicted this move and everything. Remember, I highlighted it as it was falling. This is a place where it reversed, all this kind of stuff. Um, it doesn't mean it's going to reverse all the way up. So now I'm looking at sort of this area and the bigger area actually is this. And I wouldn't have marked this area. I would have marked this area if I were me. Okay, so my plan A as a bear would have been to sell here. My plan B would have been to sell up uh, here. Okay. We're kind of right in the middle of that. So even though we, as it was falling, we predicted this is where it would rise. Well, it just rose up into the area in which bears are going to take another shot, especially if there's some risk off thing, especially if someone in the British parliament, I don't know, speaks. Right. So, uh, yeah, just be careful. <laughs> we giga, we typically typically do uh, gold and oil, all U.S. dollar, dollar pairs, all uh, yen pairs. And then from there, if you have a particular cross you want me to review, Sometimes I'm willing to do it, sometimes I'm not.
Well, thank you for subscribing, Dihad. Yeah, well, advice of building a plan. That's what I do all day, every single day. So now that you subscribed, you know, on Monday when I start the webinar, you will be invited to just trade a demo for several years if you need um, and hang with me for seven, several years if you need and we'll get you fixed and squared away. Well, uh, and why does the pound go down? <laughs> All right, well, Will M asks an astute question. The U.S. dollar is a reserve is the reserved currency. Thank you, Scott. Scott's a new subscriber. Thank you, Scott. Um, Will, the USD is a, the reserve currency for the world. That's one big thing. Okay, and the major benefit to being the reserve currency is that you can that your debt is is denominated in your own money, and that's a big deal because if you owe people money, you can just print money. If the British owe people American dollars, they can't print American dollars. Thank you, interesting world. So in this case, what happens when Americans are doing really, really well? They're filthy, stinking rich. They start buying stuff from China, from Japan, from South Korea. They start buying Ferraris. And Bugattis from Italy and Porsches and Mercedes and BMWs from Germany. And, and every time they do that, money leaves the United States as an, and then exchange for the local currency. So if I'm out buying Lamborghinis, I'm doing so in euro. So I'm selling my US dollar and I'm buying euro so I can get my Lambo. Okay? So when I'm filthy, stinking rich, I'm spending money outside the United States because things in the United States are too expensive. This is what inflation is. So why would I buy an American product that's expensive when I can just go buy a European or an Asian product for, I can get more bang for my buck. So I spend my money outside the borders and the US dollar weakens when things are good. When things are bad, I bring my money home, but also Foreigners are like, oh, my God, I don't trust my own bank. I don't trust my own government. Things are going bad. They're going to steal all my money. Like, look, at places like Argentina, people would wake up in the morning and 40% of their bank account was repatriated by the government. Just like, sorry, we took your retirement account. So people are very concerned about such things when, when the economy is going bad globally. So what they do is they buy U.S. treasuries because they know the U.S. government's not going to rip them off. So, and the banking system is safe and all that kind of stuff, right? So a, a billionaire in Venezuela is going to buy a bunch of the U.S. treasuries. Thank you, Abel. By, when things are bad, they're going to buy U.S. treasuries for protection. And what that does is means now they're buying U.S. dollars to buy U.S. treasuries. So when things are good, Americans are spending across the border because foreigners are just cheaper than locals. Foreign products are relatively cheaper than local products. So you spend your money outside the borders, the dollar weakens. And then when things go bad around the world economically, then those foreigners demand U.S. treasuries and the dollar goes up. So it's, it's the opposite of what you would think. And in fact, it's opposite what you probably learned in economics in university. If you went out and bought a textbook, and I got a dozen of them, uh, on economics, the, the, they won't say that. because they're not taking the reserve currency into account. <laughs> Good to bring a bell. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, I was thinking about bringing back the cigar fund. That was nice when you guys would every once in a while buy me a cigar, that was nice. Hey, good trade, Wayne, boom, cigar. <laughs> Yeah, anyways, I'm here every single day, Will. Uh, so thank you to everybody. Oh, is that right, Peter? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, so here's the problem, Peter. They probably are very well educated. They probably know economics. They probably passed the test. The professor re regurgitated the stuff that's in the textbook. 
And now your buddies are regurgitating the stuff that the professor taught them, and none of them have traded Forex. So I say, wow, really? You have an MBA from where? Oh, well, that's really impressive. Too bad you have no idea how the real world works. <laughs> they love it, by the way, when you say that. And then they're like, well, where the hell did you go to school? I'm like, oh, I went to Harvard. Where did you go? East Coeta? Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, so anyways, I got to go. Uh, I got to go. Uh, I'm on my way to Cambridge now, in fact. Uh, I got to go. I'm learning how to manage endowments for museums and other artistic um, institutions like let's say the symphony. So one day I want to sit on a board of directors or board of advisors. I've sat on many boards already, but um, I'd like to sit on a board for either a museum or like the symphony, right? Or the opera. And so I'm taking this class. It's the only class in the United States for this. So specifically managing the endowment. So I'd be like the, the finance committee chair per uh, sub chair for some sort of you know museum or something um so i'm actually taking a class on that it's pretty interesting so i gotta go do that um i gotta do study that do group project and then um i have a paper due all the next like th three weeks then i got finals and then we have uh, it's crazy stuff but i'm trying to i'm trying to give back to the world you, you know what i mean so putting all this ever uh, effort in to give back so um, if you're in my swing trading group, uh, I'm going to just go over there now. I'm going to open the room and I'm just going to go. I'm just going to click record and um, go. All right. So maybe I'll see you guys over there if you just happen to be here. So anyways, thank you guys. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Sorry it was short today. I will see you on Monday. Have a fantastic weekend. Mwah. Love you, babe. But I got to jump. <laughs>